welcome to another episode of the Linux Guide. Today I'm going to be talking about Linux permissions, file permissions. One cool thing about Linux that I think it just really knocks the snot out of Windows on is how it handles user ownership of files. Now Mac OS is going to get a pass on this because Mac OS uses the same philosophy as Linux, although the way to do things in Mac OS is not necessarily exactly the same as it's done in Linux. There are some similarities. Windows, however, their NTFS file system and the way it handles files is pretty terrible when it comes to ownership, and Linux just really beats it everywhere. It's also, although it looks intimidating at first, I think actually easier to handle permissions in Linux than Windows. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make a file here. And there's our file. I'm going to go and show you the properties on it. Now I'm on Pop! OS, but this is going to be real similar no matter what Linux distribution you're on. Right here I have a few options. I have the owner, I have the group, and then I have others. The owner, who is me, I can read and write. The group that it's default to is the Linux guy, which is the user group that my user automatically belongs to. And that group also has read write and then others can only read the file. This is a pretty cool setup because in particular this middle part, the groups. I can assign a file to a group and it can actually be just in my home folder but because of what group it's in I can make it available to other people. So if I wanted to make it available to all users who have sudo not meaning that they have to elevate, not meaning they have to become root, but they actually just have access to the sudo group. By doing that, now anyone with that permission can automatically access my file. Read and write is pretty straightforward, though. Uh, this is the same as it is on Windows and Mac. If it's read-only, all you can do is read the file. If it's read-write, then you can delete the file, you can manipulate the file, overwrite the file, and also just read the file. So if I were to assign this to sudo, Right now, they can do anything to it, but now people who are members of that group can only read it. One thing to note, root can always supersede all of these permissions, which is another great advantage of Linux. When you have problems with file permissions, you can just always run a command as root or open a file browser as root to fix the stuff. You'll see another nice feature right here. I can allow executing right here, and I don't believe Windows has this ability. Someone in the comments correct me if I'm wrong, but I can check a box and make it executable, which is really convenient. Alright, so we've looked at the graphical interface and how it handles permissions. There are lots of GUI tools that'll let you manage files real well, but there's other ways. So I'm going to throw this in my documents folder just so that it's in a logical place, and then I'm going to go ahead and go down to these terminals. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cd into documents, and there's my file. What if I wanted to know more about this file? Well, in a command line, I can do ls space dash l, and this will list everything about the file. So you can see currently its permissions are read write by me, read by my group, and read by other users. Now this draws attention to something really interesting. You saw in the graphical interface that the groups could actually read write, except here in the terminal it says that they can only read. I have found discrepancies with the GUI and the terminal, however, I have never found the opposite to be true. So like if you make a change in the terminal, it seems to always affect the GUI. For this reason, I suggest actually manipulating file permissions from the command line if you think you're able to do that. If you, it's too much for you, don't do it. But if you think you can, and this will serve as sort of a guide to get you started, then this is probably the place to do it because it's going to be more reliable. So you see right here that this is my file and it also belongs to the group the Linux guy. Now I have some other users on here. One of them his name is Ingunto. I'm gonna log in as. And you see I'm actually in the same working directory right here as the Linux guy is. Now there's a file in here called file. There's nothing in the file. But I can read it, right? I didn't get any errors. If I want to edit it, I can. However, if I want to edit it, you'll see right here it says file is unwritable. That's because I don't have the proper permissions right now. So, what do I want to give myself those permissions? Well, either one of these users have root, but I'm going to say that the Linux guy is our root user right now to explain a few ways that I can do this. So, first of all, I can use a command called chmod. Now chmod uses numbers. 
These numbers correspond to permissions. Now they're grouped in three, not because you need to know some fancy complicated hexadecimal or binary or anything like that to understand what these numbers mean. These numbers just represent a group of three letters. So it, you don't have to remember every combination of numbers with the chmod command. You really only need to remember what one digit does and then which placeholder it holds. So the first digit represents the owner, the second digit represents the group, and the third digit represents everybody else, anybody else on the computer. So 777 gives all of these all of the permissions, and I will show you that just so you can see it. There you go, they all have read, write, execute, which is a really not a good way to handle your files. So let's make this a little more secure. I probably want that access. So I can give myself seven. Say this is a program I wrote. Maybe the rest I want to just have four. And I'll show you what that does. So now I have all of the power but everybody else has read access. So they can read the file, they can see it, like I can over here. I can cat the file, but I can't do anything else with it. I can open it in nano, but I can't actually change it in nano. What if I wanted to change it in nano? Do I need to give myself all seven? Nah. This should suffice. Seven, six, four. You know, let's shell again, you'll see. Now the group has read rank. The other thing I need to do, as you'll see, is I need to make this user a member of that group. Because right now I st still can't do it, right? So I'm still not a member of that group. So although people in the group can do this, I'm not a member. I, I can't do anything. So how, how do I get that? So for that, there's this awesome program called GroupMems. Now there are other ways to do this, but GroupMems is nice because GroupMems modifies things rather than changing them. So I'm showing you here so you can see the syntax. So what we want to do here is dash A for username, and then we can add the flag dash G for group name. So let's go ahead and do that. And this will be needed to run as a root as well. So if you don't have root, you won't be able to use group mems. So let's do sudo group mems. Dash A for the user, which is to add the user. We'll add this user in Gunto to dash G the Linux guy. Now normally this would work, but we got an authentication failure. Now, I'm glad that happened because I'm actually going to show you another way to change the group permissions. So group M should normally work. I recommend using it as root. This particular root user doesn't have the proper permissions to use group mems. What happens if you get this? Well, there's another way to do it. And that is to use etsy slash group. So let's go ahead and look at etsy slash group. We can do that with cat etsy group. And I'm going to put a pipe here and I'm going to use the grep command. The grep command lets me sort things. So I want to sort by the Linux guy. Now why would I maybe want to do this? Well, it turns out there's a whole bunch of groups on this computer and I really don't want to look at all of them. I'm really only interested in this one. So by using a pipe here in my command and using grep and then the Linux guy, I'm going to filter anything out with the Linux guy in it. So let's do that and you'll see here they all are. You'll see that Ngunto is in fact in the sudo, sudoers file, but is not in the group the Linux guy. So what if we do if we want to change that? Well, with root permissions, we can actually go in and make that change by sudo nano etsy group. And we can do control W to find the Linux guy. And we can do control W again to find the next instance. All the way down here at the bottom is the Linux guys group. Comma separated values we can add in Gunto. And we'll write it out. And then we'll exit. Let's look at that again to see who's there. You'll see that Gunto is actually in the group now, the Linux guy. So now we should be able to open this file. 
and you see we no longer have that error that we had before. I went ahead and wrote test and exited, and now it's cat file, and you see there it wrote, it wrote test because it can read the change that we made. Back here, we can also cat file, and there's the changes that this user made. Now there's one more thing with permissions that's really important, and that has to do with the chown command. So if we do ls-l again to look, we use the chmod command to change these permissions. What if we want to change this? What if I don't want it to belong to this group? What if I wanted to say belong to the sudoers group? What if, say, the user in Gunto here, who is in the sudoers group, what if it was just easier to, instead of changing all those permissions and doing everything that I did to just change the group so that it's a group that you both share, and now this user can access it? Well, you can do that with the chown command. So, again, you're usually going to need to be root to make this change because it's affecting other users. Now, if it was just affecting you, you could do this as a non-elevated user, but because we're affecting other users, we need to be root, so we'll do sudo. So we'll do sudo chown and the Linux guy, colon, whatever group we want. So let's say sudo. And then we finally need to affect the file or the folder that we want, so we'll type the file. Now if we do ls-l again, you will see that it is now in the group sudo. Now everyone in the group sudo has these permissions to this file, so they can't execute it, but they can read and write because that's the permissions we gave the group. Now, after I've gone through all of that, why would you want to do this? Well, this is really useful if you have files to share across a computer and you want to make them available to lots of people. One thing to note, some operating systems make this really easy for you. Pop OS is one of them. It has this folder called public right here. This permission is already set so that everyone can access everything in here. Not all distributions have this, so using what I've taught you here, you'll be able to make your own. More importantly, though, you might not like the structure or the setup of the public folder the way the distribution has given it to you, and you may want to build your own the way you like it, make some kind of share that everyone has access to in some other way, and this gives you real control over how you do that. Hopefully you found this helpful. I know group permissions and user permissions were something difficult for me to grasp when I first got into the Linux world, so this is definitely something I would have liked to have had at the time when I started. As always, thank you for watching The Linux Guy. Please follow us on Library, send us a tip, and we'll see you in the next one.